from all over the country. We'll bring people to Hollywood who have something to say, to tell something they want on this new program. What do you want? Starring Groucho Marx. <laughs> Brought to you by a couple of astute sponsors who are cashing in on the natural week-to-week -week publicity this new program will receive. Well, here I am with a brand new show. I'm sure it doesn't come as any news that everybody in the world wants something. Some people ask for very little. Others want everything they can get. What's interesting is that so many people have such unusual and peculiar desires and ambitions. And that's the reason for this new show. We're going to find interesting people all over the country who have amusing, entertaining, and sometimes strange desires. This will be their platform. I don't promise that they'll all get what they want, all we promise them is a chance to tell the world about it. So, George, let's get underway. Who's the first to be asked, what do you want? Uh, Groucho, Margaret Krebs is standing by to talk to you. So, will you come in, please, Margaret, and uh, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to What Do You Want? Margaret Krebs, huh? Is it Miss Krebs or Mrs. Krebs? It's Miss Krebs. Do you have a job, Margaret? Yes, I'm a nurse and a physiotherapist. Are you a practical nurse? I'm an undergraduate. Is that an impractical nurse? That's impractical. Oh. <laughs> okay, Margaret, now let's find out the real reason you're up here. What do you want? I want a woman to be president. I want a woman too, but what do you want up here? <laughs> I want a woman to be the next president of the United States. Are you, you mean you're dissatisfied with Kennedy already? <laughs> Do you have any special uh, woman in mind for this job, Margaret, or will just anybody do as long as it is, uh, it's a female? No, there are many qualified women for the job. Could you name one woman that you'd like to see elected president? Well, I'd take the job. <laughs> would you actually, like, would you like to be president? Well, I campaigned in 1960. I was you a candidate. You campaigned this, this year? I was a candidate in 1960. Well, you could be president. You, have, you certainly have as much hair as Kennedy. <laughs> you ran in the last election? And I'm still I don't campaigning. remember seeing your name on the ballot. What party were you affiliated with? I had Prohibition? No, no, I had no party, but I was a write-in candidate. Oh. Well, if you'd have changed your name to X, you'd have been elected by a landslide. <laughs> You say you, you ran in the last election. Uh, how many votes did you get? I have no way of knowing just exactly how many votes well, I got. Well, approximately. Well, uh, Ten million? I know of, oh, no. Five million? <laughs> no. A million? I, I know of five. <laughs> five million? Votes. Five votes you got? <laughs> That's what I know of. I may have gotten well, more. Well, there may have been two others. There may have had seven. That <laughs> there may be a couple you, you didn't hear about. Yeah, yeah that's, there may have been. That was pretty close. This may explain why the vote between Kennedy and Nixon was so close. <laughs> See what she did? She, she actually got the big independent vote. <laughs> Five votes. Now, how much did you spend on your campaign? I spent $500 of my own money. That's $100 a vote. <laughs> You can't run for president. You'd, be, you'd have to be as rich as uh, Croesus or Rockefeller. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of money. You spend $500? And $13.75 gifts from friends. You gave $13.75? No, they, friends gave me $13.75. That was, uh, what was that, the ride home after the... <laughs> that was for stamps. Oh. Why are you so uh, insistent on having a woman president? Well, a woman approaches a subject from a different angle than a man. That's she very true. <laughs> That's one of the profoundest statements I've ever heard. <laughs> but I doubt if that is enough to get you elected to the White House. And a, and a woman has uh, intuition. Yes. I've often heard about this. You've heard about yeah. it. Why is it they make so many mistakes when they get married? 
if they had this feminine intuition. Well, it's not the woman's fault that the, to make any mistake. I see. It's always the man's it's fault. It's always the man's fault. Well, you'll certainly get the woman's vote when you write. <laughs> but you'd be all alone in the White House, Margaret. You see, Kennedy has Jackie up there, but you'd be up there all alone. Well, I have That's four years. That's a very years. lonely place. I have four years. Maybe I'll get a husband in those four years. <laughs> That's why you want to be president, eh? <laughs> Would you push him around if you were president? No. Well, then he'd actually be president. He'd be making the decisions, wouldn't oh, he? Oh, no, he wouldn't. Not if I was president. Well, well now I know why you're single. Huh? <laughs> you know, it's all right for women to be the boss, but they must pretend that men are the bosses. Oh, well, you can pretend. You've got to do some great acting when you're married if you want to sustain a marriage and keep it moving. Now, Margaret, we know what you want. Now, here's what I want. I want people to be more informed on what's going on in the world. So we're going to test your knowledge of current history. Now, Mr. F this is Mr. Fenneman. Have you met Mr. Fenneman? No, we haven't. How do you do? This is uh, Margaret Kress. George, Mr. Fenneman is going to ask you a question. If you get the question right, you win $1,000. Now, George, you ask her, and I'm going to try to guess who. I don't want to see the answer. The bachelor king of Belgium made big news late in 1960 when he married a beautiful Spaniard. I'm for, sunk already. <laughs> for $1,000, what's the name of the king of the Belgian? Now, just a moment, Margaret, before you give me your answer. I have a deal. How would you like to stop here and settle for $400? You have a choice. You can quit, or you can go ahead and try for the 1000 Of course, if you miss, then you're broke. Now, think it over. Um, I think I know of, but... Uh, well, in that I case... Want, I want... What are you going to do, Margaret? I'll take a chance. All right. No. Now, do you remember the question? I've forgotten the question. Uh, <laughs> He's forgotten the question, and I don't know the answer. This is a great team. What, what is the name of the king of the Belgians? It's B-E-B-A-U-D-I-N or something. Like that. I think we're going to give you That's that. Close it's uh, B A U D O I N uh, Baudouin, Baudouin, and we're going to give you. I thought it was better one. You know, you just won a thousand dollars, Margaret. Now you can buy a lot of votes with that much money. Do you plan on running again in '64? Yes, sir. Uh, well, congratulations, Margaret. Thank you very much. And good luck so on, on your here. political career. Hey, and when so you get into the White House, the first thing you do. <laughs> the first when you get in the White House, Margaret, the first thing you do is change all the furniture around, paint the kitchen and marry the Secretary of the Treasury. <laughs> Two interesting ladies are on stage now. They're Beth Lawrence and her daughter Betty. They're eager to surprise Groucho with a most unusual answer when he asks, what do you want? Nice to meet you. Thank you. you sit down? Welcome, girls. Now, uh... What are you after? I mean, what do you want? Where are you from, Beth? Uh, well, I was born in Homosassa Springs, Florida, but you I... You were born in where? Homosassa Springs. That's uh, an Indian name. That's, uh, but I grew up in Orlando, and then I went to Atlanta to live, and uh, I was um, assistant buyer for a large department store there. Uh -huh. What did you do? Go around and buy department stores? Ah, uh, no, you know what assistant buyer. They're flunky for the buyer. Oh. Yeah, you know, they're general And did you service. do a lot of flunky business down there? Well, uh, not exactly too much flunky business, but still I got um, married there. Yeah, too. enough to have Betty, anyway. Uh, well, I... <laughs> well, now that we know a little about you both, I, I'll ask the important question. The all-important question. What do you girls want? Well... You don't mind if I call you a girl? No, huh? no, no, no. I feel highly flattered. Uh, we want husbands to uh, meet our specifications. N nice uh, husbands. Oh, well, you're not going to get husbands that are shaped like you are. Well, now, after all, after all, I'm a good cook, though. Now, if you're a good cook... No, but your specifications are different than most men I know. Well, I know, but I'm not going to... Uh, well, Beth, we better stop speaking in generalities. Uh, specifically, what are you looking for in the way of husbands? Men? <laughs> Uh, we're looking for men, but uh, I, I, I want a husband that loves cats. Sam cats, you mean? Uh, no, not Sam cats. I mean that loves nice cats. You know, beautiful you want to? You don't care if he loves you. Cats. You just want a husband that loves cats. Is that it? Four-legged cats, and he also has to. Well, wait. Suppose he, he doesn't love you, and he just loves cats. 
Well, I, I think it'd come together, though. I mean, because I love cats, and I'd have to have a husband that loves cats, and then I want one that loves music, and uh, then he has to have money, too. He has to have at least $5,000. I see. Well, there you have it, man. There's the deal. All you need is an air for music, $5,000 in cash, and a love for cats. <laughs> What about you, Betty? If you fell in love with a fellow, would you marry him if he didn't like cats? No. No, I wouldn't. Even if you were crazy about him? I've encountered this problem before, and it, and it wouldn't work out, and no, I just won't do it. Well, Betty's had men to try to get it to marry him. I've and had and this and trouble before. Well, and Betty uh, is very attractive, and... Well, uh, and, I think she is, too. And She's so are you. Uh, well, thank you, but anyway, we, we just happen to have a lot of cats. We love our cats, and they have to love our cats, too. <laughs> So in, a, in other words, you don't want a man, you want a catalyst. We want a cat lover, but we, you know, he has to Besides, be a... And not only that, Groucho, a man, a man that loves cats love is cat. very trustworthy, and they're very sweet people, and you who, can... Who is? Cat. A cat, and, 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 and if they're... A cat man? Yeah, and they're they love a cat, and they're good people, too. They're very honest people. You can... You mean a man one. couldn't love a, a cat and be a crook? Not really. Not really. No. It, it, is, it, is too it, it has been proven. Now that is, this is entirely true, that people that love cats, you what get. What is this a, based on? Do you have any facts? I, I mean, as you just ad libbing well, this. I know. Listen, I knew a photographer once, and he had been. I a knew photographer a photographer for 40 once years. too. He didn't but, have a cat to his name. <laughs> He said he could always tell his customers by whether they were honest or not by his cats. Well, was this photographer a cool cat? Well, he must have been, but anyway, anyway. How many, how many cats do you have at home? We have 15. 15 cats at home, huh? Uh -huh. One kitten. Well, do you have uh, males or females, or what uh, are they? About eight. Is one. there another sex with cats, or males and females? Eight, eight girls and seven boys. About eight you of have, one and seven You boys. have eight of one and seven of the other. Uh, although our husband... That back fence of yours around midnight must sound like Hollywood Bo Boulevard well, during a... <laughs> During a hurricane. Listen, those cats are under lock and key, and they're the yeah. quietest things in the they whole are, neighborhood. Huh? I should say that. They're the really neighbors nice, too. The neighbors well, cannot complain. They never complain, no, though. They you can't. know, every dog has his day, so I suppose every cat has to have his night. Huh? Yeah, well, the cats... Now, are Betty, good. in order to get out, out tonight, how many cat sitters did you have to engage? Uh, well, we didn't engage any because I brought half of them with me. Tonight. You're kidding. If I'd have known this, I'd have had a double allergy shot. <laughs> well, I know from experience that this is something I can't avoid. So, Betty, why don't you trot off and drag these uh, animals out here? Huh? All right. Betty loves cats. Betty, uh, Betty is a fool, you know. Betty is a cute-looking girl. Wasn't for those lousy cats, she could be married to <laughs> And see, here's one. Who, who are these? Now, this is uh, baby's uh, sister here. Baby Snooks? Yeah, and then this is uh, a little uh, Prince Haji Baba. They'd make a nice rug for the uh, well, kitchen. Uh, you know, I'm afraid they'll knock it yeah, off. Yeah, I'll put it right here. Here, now, turn around here like a nice boy. you bring? 14? No, we brought eight. No, Can you imagine what a rival network could do to this show right now if they trained a dog loose? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, they better not. not on if my they cat. trained a dog loose right now. We well, Beth, cats, introduce no. me to your friends. Oh, no. uh, this is now, men out, all the men out there, I want you to meet your new in-laws. <laughs> Go ahead, Beth, introduce them. I'm trying to get this one. I can't find this leash. All right, uh, this one, I'll, oh, I'll begin with Honey Sam here. He is, uh, Honey Sam is the oldest. He, this this one, is, well, who's this? Honey Sam. Honey Sam. Now, how do you get a name Sam. like that? Well, the Honey Sam is, um, is, is, well, he was just so sweet. We had to call him something with honey in it. And uh, I tell you, he, he was 12 years old last November. Thank you. Yeah, have they won any ribbons? Oh, gosh, oh. hundreds of them. Can you imagine how many boxes they must have in the house with sand in them? <laughs> I bet, I bet it looks like Arabia there. <laughs> now, 
Betty, uh, switch the subject for just a moment. You haven't told me specifically what kind of a husband you want. Do you, do you want a, a cat man? Very, very much so. And I want him to be um, a nice dresser, but not too stuffy. A nice and presser, did you say? A dresser. Oh. You know, uh, Listen, Betty wants but, one that'll roll in the floor with, yeah. with, with the cat. With Betty? You want one? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I want I'd be glad to roll in the floor with Betty. Anyway. <laughs> You don't have to get rid of the cats. I know, but you know, I, I want him to, I want him to be able to be, feel free to be friends with all my cats and be, and, and, uh, well, and put I, on some old clothes and just roll around with them and just, well, you know, Betty. somebody like Marlon Brando, you know, like that. Marlon Brando. You want to roll on the floor with Marlon Brando? With the cats, yes. With all the cats and you and Marlon Brando. Well, it's if fine. he could ever see our cats and come and, and see them, boy, he would be down on the floor with them because I happen to know How do you know? Them. How do you know he likes cats? Oh, I've seen him photographed a thousand times with he cats. He always loves has them. cats in he his home. He has that. Really? He has that yes. feeling to you? He, he loves them. That. And his, his eyes tell you that. that. His well, eyes, I, he I don't think you could nail Brando. He's pretty fast on his feet. <laughs> Well, there it is. Now, I've asked these girls, what do you want, and they told me. Well, we, that's what we now, I don't know what's going to happen as a result of your appeal for husbands, but I'm sure there'll be some good prospects showing. Oh. And when they do, we're going to have you back along with all the other candidates on oh, this show. Oh, wonderful. Listen, maybe sometimes... Now, if there are any men listening with $5,000 in cash and enough lever for 15 cats, let's hear from them. Well, it takes a lot of cat food. A lot of cat food? Yes, it does. Yeah. Can't now, girls, are you ready to take a chance at the thousand dollars? George, you explain the question. You give him the question, please. She was All so right. busy with the cats until I don't know whether we know. We don't know very. You have a chance to read. Well, this question, I, I can assure you, this question will not be about cats. Oh. Now, George, you ask the question, and after he asks the question, I'm going to tell you something. The birth pangs of the Republic of the Congo. I don't want to see that. Were uh, Turn it around. Uh, current history certainly. So for one thousand dollars. Tell us the name of the military leader who ousted Lumumba and took over control of the new country shortly after its independence. Now, just a minute, girls. Before you answer, listen to this. Would you like to stop right here and take $400? Or would you like to try to answer the question, and if you get it right, you win 1000 Of course, if you miss it, these cats will be reduced to hunting mice. Well, so I... think it over. I don't know the question because, as I Betty, told you, you don't know it. No. And because I told you, we don't have much time to read the newspapers. We stay so busy all the I time, know. you know, with the cats and You everything. must have newspapers spread all over the floor. <laughs> <laughs> but they're not today's papers, and unfortunately. So we'll just take the four hundred dollars. Well, you've decided a bite in the hand has weighed two cats yeah, in the bush. That's yeah, that's right. Okay, you get four hundred dollars. By the way, did you have any answer in mind? About what? <laughs> Then you have to admire people who are so fanatically fond of animals. All right, give them the answer. Uh, Mobutu. What do Mobutu. you think of that? <laughs> well, now, how would I have known well that? the next time you get it, the next new cat you get, you name him Mobutu, huh? Eh? We're naming Groucho. Yeah, I wish you would. <laughs> uh, Beth and Betty Lawrence, thanks for being with us, and good luck to you and the cats. You're real charmers, and a man is a fool if he doesn't grab a package deal like this. Oh. <laughs> A commercial will come at this point, and uh, speaking of commercials, our title, What Do You Want?, is a natural springboard for selling the sponsor's product. Uh, Groucho, we have a very special guest for you to meet now. He's one of the best-known law enforcement officers of the United States. And well, certainly... goodbye. <laughs> a leading Wait citizen. Wait a minute. Who is this before I... He is the Los Angeles Chief of Police, William H. Parker. Uh... So, Chief Parker, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. How do you do, Chief? There you go, here. Right over here, sit down. Sit down for the Inquisition, uh, Chief. Thank you. I'm not saying a word without my mouthpiece. <laughs> you know, it's strange. You and I have attended many of the same affairs, but we've never spoken to each other. Did you know that? Well, I think you're right. I don't recall ever seeing you at any of these affairs. Of course you didn't see me. While you were breaking in the front door, I was breaking out the back door. 
How long have you been in police work, Chief? Well, I joined the Los Angeles Police Department in August 1927. And are you happy with your uh, present vocation? Oh, I think that I uh, How'd you get made to a wise selection. How'd you get to be chief? Through competitive... Bribery? <laughs> you don't want me to answer that. <laughs> I started to answer through competitive civil service examination. Gotcha. And you didn't schmear anybody? Uh, it wasn't necessary at all. You know what schmear means, though, huh? Well, uh... Is this I don't a... know the sense in which you use it. <laughs> I'm, I'm only kidding, Chief. After all, you're my guest, and if I'm not careful, someday I may be your guest. <laughs> and if I am, remember, Chief, as far as I'm concerned, a rubber hose should only be used for watering the lawn. <laughs> Do they still use the rubber hose down there? For watering the lawn. <laughs> He's pretty shifty himself, this kid. <laughs> How does the L.A. police force stack up against other cities? Are we modern, scientific, and as infallible uh, as the TV detectives? Well, this, uh, I hate to really make that comparison. I would imagine that they learn everything they know from us. Mm -hmm. But actually... But how is it they solve all the crimes and you don't? Because they only have 30 minutes. <laughs> That's not true, Chief. They only have 27. There's three minutes with a commercial. Well, uh, you're technically right. Could you do it in 27 minutes? We have, and in, in sometimes in 27 minutes. In some cases, we haven't solved in 27 years. You never call in any of the TD, TV detectives to solve a case, huh? Uh, well, I think we had some help from Jack Webb from time to time, but I can't recall using anyone else. <laughs> well, with all the scientific approach, I assume you've wiped out crime in L.A., is that right? Oh, actually, it's getting worse. <laughs> We have a, a very difficult and serious situation. It is not a question of the proficiency of the police service. It's a question of the indulgences of the American people. You see, crime in America is skyrocketing. In Los Angeles, the same number of persons in 1960 committed two and a half times as many serious felony crimes as they did in 1950. And all of the pressures seem to be to increase the safeguards to uh, of the criminal. Protect the criminal from uh, being brought to justice. It costs the police more and more to actually accomplish less, while crime is ascending at a tremendous rate, and all of the experts tell us it will continue. Well, I'm right with you, Chief. We may kid the police, but I want to tell you, in a serious emergency, it's mighty handy to have one around. Chief, you don't mind that if I, I kidded you up here tonight, did you? Well, because, oh. uh, you know, after all, we do try to... It happens to me all the time. I, I... You make a practice of well, going I get, on these I get letters shows? from crackpots. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> You, see, you get letters from crackpots, you yes, say? Well, thanks loads, Chief. Uh, <laughs> at least you have to admit that I'm a lovable old crackpot. Agreed, agreed. Chief, you know why you're here. Now tell me, what do you want? Of course, uh, as we have discussed it, I have more than 34 years of service in, as a police officer, so I'm not seeking anything for myself. But I am very much interested in the welfare of my nation. And... Uh, I am interested in finding some way to bring into the police service in greater numbers qualified men, because I think that they are the group that must hold this country together until we do make up our mind to comply with, with the rules under which we must live. I think if more young men realized how important the police task is, how complicated it is, how challenging it is, and how rewarding in the sense of gratification of something well done and a contribution to their country that we would have no difficulty getting additional people, the, the, the numbers that we need. And if this program has assisted in that regard, uh, my time tonight has been very much worthwhile. Well, I hope, I hope it does succeed. And, Chief, I'm too old to apply for a job as a police officer, but if you ever need an old stool pigeon, just call on me. <laughs> We can use information from any source. Chief, I don't want you to think uh, attempting a bribe up here, but how would you like a thousand dollars? Well, if you're referring to uh, the quiz money, uh, uh. I have uh, 
Well, well I have... wasn't referring to that, but uh, you switched it around. Well, to that. what I was referring to, I have a few favors I would like. <laughs> I think we must talk about the quiz money. All right. Well, let's confine it at the moment to the quiz money. But I uh... later on, I'll see you outside, and we can talk about it. I have a, a young officer with me tonight that I think is quite representative of the department who uh, is here for the purpose of engaging in the oh, quiz. Oh, good. Well, you don't care if I bribe him, huh? Well, now, that's a, a personal matter. Oh, so I you see. can take it up with him. Well, now, well, where is it? Of course, I must tell you this, that any money that he might win here, he cannot keep it. You mean I get it back? No, again? it goes to the Los Angeles Police Relief Association yeah. and to our charity fund. Well, it couldn't, couldn't go for a better... So, uh, uh, would you like to meet the officer? Groucho Marx. Groucho, Officer Ray. Thank you, Major. Uh, I'll leave him with you. Chief, it was a pleasure to talk to you. And from now on, you can be sure of at least one law-abiding citizen in this town. Well, George Fenneman. Well, Groucho, this is... I think you're scared the daylights out of him. <laughs> On behalf of the force, I thank you very much. Thank you Joe. very much. Now, uh, you want to sit down? Uh, Mr. Fenneman, did you meet Mr. Fenneman? He's no, going to ask you a question. If you get the right answer, it's worth $1,000. Here's the question. A long-legged Tennessee State co-ed won three gold medals for the United States in the Rome Olympics. Still the best female track star in the country, who is this charming girl? Now, just a moment before you answer, how would you like to stop right now and settle for $400? If you don't know the answer, you can stop now and take the 400 or you can go ahead for the grant. As the chief mentioned, this is not our money, and I wouldn't want to uh, gamble with it, so uh, I think I'll take the 400. Okay. I want a chance at the answer. Well, you don't get any money, though, if you No, get I don't right, get any so. money, but I'll see if I know. Is it Wilma Rudolph? You're right. Well, I read the sporting pages. <laughs> so you're grabbing the $400. You're smart. I predict someday you'll be the chief. <laughs> thanks, thanks to you and the Chief Parker, and good luck to you and all policemen everywhere. Well, next week, What Do You Want? will be brought to you by another perceptive sponsor who will capitalize on the publicity and merchandising advantages of this exciting new format. And to illustrate the wide scope of our format, let's take a look at some of the interesting guests we'll have on future shows. For example, here's a professional gambler who wants to expose card cheats by revealing their tricks. I got two pair. I got two pair. Yeah. I got two pair too. Four aces. Yeah. <laughs> well, it beats me. I got nines and fives. Variety. format has unlimited variety. Here's a couple of young drama students who want to become professional actors. Madam, if it wasn't for this excruciating palpitation, if my whole insides wasn't upset, I'd talk to you in a different way. Oxy medals out of mine! Ah, mine! Ah. Well, these are just a few of the wide assortment of people who come from all over the country to answer Groucho's question, what do you want? Well, that's it for tonight. I'll be here again next week, and I trust you will, too. Good night, and when you buy our sponsor's products, tell them Groucho sent you. <laughs> <laughs>